Of course, a lot of people are looking forward to the upcoming rate cuts. The month is almost over, guys. It seemed like we just started October not too long ago, but we are already in uh, the final two weeks. We have today and tomorrow to go, and then next week will be the final week, and that could be the craziest week. Like I said at the beginning of the, the month, it's not over it's until it's over, until we're in November, okay? So we still got over a week for October to kick in, and I, honestly, it has. I mean, we haven't gone to 80,000 yet, but we are definitely climbing upwards, and we almost hit 70,000 last week. We were at 69.5. There's no reason why we can't get back up there and break into all-time high this weekend. So not over until it's over, and we can certainly see that soon. But moving towards November, December, it can get better because of these upcoming rate cuts. Right now, it's looking like the first week of November, there's a 97% chance we're going to get another 25 basis point cut. That's awesome. And then you're looking at December 18th. After that, there's a 68% chance for another 25 point cut. So that's 50 basis points on top of our 50 basis point. That's a full percentage point within just a few months time. That is fantastic. And our economy, quite frankly, needs it because things are looking pretty weak right now. Consumer spending, buying, everything is looking pretty weak. So we actually do need it. And Powell needs to cut really quickly. And of course, in two weeks, in less than two weeks, we will, we will have a new president. And that will have a big effect, too, on markets. Um, all right, what else is there? Gold. Gold has been rallying. Gold has been rallying. And there are some that suggest that gold rally needs to stop for Bitcoin to break an all-time high. I say that's complete nonsense. And here's the reason why. Because we have a supply shock that's happening right now. Now, people don't quite understand that because they're like, well, if there's a supply shock, Bitcoin should be going up already. Well, it has been. If you've been paying attention, Bitcoin was less than 30000 a year ago. So people still don't quite understand that. That, yeah, we have been, we have been going through a supply shock, okay, we still have up and downs. Yes, we still have people that sell, but overall, Bitcoin's been trending up and up and up and up. Yes, it's been going up over 100% over the last year. And you still have these ETFs buying and buying and buying. Yesterday, it seemed like we were going to have a negative day for outflow. Someone even asked me in live chat yesterday, like, why do we have two days of outflow? I'm like, I don't know. Why does it rain, right? Sometimes we have outflows. But you know what? Larry Fink is like, no, we're not going to have two consecutive days of outflow. BlackRock bought $317 million of the Bitcoin yesterday, overcoming the $99 million and a $25 million outflow from ARK and Bitwise. And we had a massive plus basically $200 million a day. This is happening. This is people don't realize how much the ETS are taking in every single day versus how much is being released per day. This is the complete opposite of what's going on with fiat. People don't realize how much fiat is being released per day versus, uh, say, Bitcoin because there's only 450 Bitcoin being produced and released per day, but you have thousands to tens of thousands being taken away every day by just the ETS alone. So supply shock is happening and this is going to have a huge cumulative effect going forward, slow and steady, 
It's not like we're going to see Bitcoin jump from 67,000 to 670,000 tomorrow. Not like that. But next year, the year after that, year after that, year after that, every four years, the four year cycle, you're going to see Bitcoin go higher and higher and higher because more and more of it is being removed from circulation. <clears throat> That's the supply shock. And just look at it. I don't know if this is up to date because I, I don't know when they update the site. But BlackRock has close to 400,000 Bitcoin. That's close to 2% of the entire supply within, again, just nine months time span since the ETFs debuted. Grayscale still has 220,000. Fidelity has 185,000. ARK has 52,000, Bitwise has 41,000, even Grayscale has another one called Minitrust, 33,000. You add all those up, that's, that's like 60 billion, 70 billion. And then you add the remaining ETFs up from the other countries, and then you add up MicroStrategy here on top, and Marathon, and Tesla, and everyone else, you're talking about a hundred plus billion dollars, plus what the countries hold, hundred plus billion dollars already removed from supply. And it's only going to increase from here on out. And you're not even talking about like retail and others that will be coming in and the miners and everyone else that are accumulating right so looking pretty darn good and some more staggering stats for you guys out of the 575 etfs that launched in 2024 14 out of the top 30 are either spot bitcoin etfs or spot eth etfs no one talks about the spot ETH ETFs because quite frankly, I don't, I don't, I don't know. I don't talk about, I don't know if anyone else does, but like they're not, they're just not that fascinating to me. But nevertheless, uh, they still, they are taking a lot like the BlackRock iShares Ethereum Trust has taken in one point. $3 billion worth of ETH. That's a whole lot. Fidelity took in $500 million for the ETH. So, and then you add Bitwise and everything. That's $2 billion worth of ETH right there. That is a whole lot also, if you think about it. And here's some more staggering stats. Uh, in the last four years, 1,800 ETFs have been launched and iBit is the most successful of all of them at $26 billion inflow. That shows you the demand for Bitcoin, institutional demand for Bitcoin. There are a lot of companies that are just fearful of holding physical Bitcoin or they can't due to regulations or accounting reasons or whatever reasons. But now that ETFs are around, this is their way of getting exposure and this will only increase. So this is the reason why it's so popular. It's not because it's like some magic, like all of a sudden everyone is just now buying. The demand probably was always there. Now it's just like there's an avenue for them to get involved. It's just before they couldn't. Now they can't. 